Well, hello everybody and welcome to this Leadership Power Strategies webinar. Hi, I'm Bill Thomas. I'm your host and presenter for today's uh, webinar. And uh, I wanted to say episode, but it really is a webinar. And I'm just going to give uh, our audience members um, and your colleagues just another few seconds to join us and then we will begin at the beginning of this webinar um, leadership power strategies enriching your wealth generating impacts and let me uh, get over to my trusty control panel here and I can get over to the place where it makes a lot and we'll do that and we'll do that and we'll begin the challenging chaotic and ever-changing conditions that today's leaders have to deal with are numerous and daunting Yet the ideas, ideals, and insights of leadership being used by most leaders are still based upon outdated, impractical, and useless philosophies and principles. So I would like to examine five of your most difficult challenges and explain some of the ways I help my clients assess, approach, and adjust their leadership actions from merely surviving to robustly generating wealthy impacts on their operations, stakeholders, and their organizational growth. If this sounds good to you, please focus your attention, take useful notes, and eliminate all your other distractions as we take this journey together. You should carefully read and study these wise, profound, and truthful words that King Solomon wrote in chapters 1 and 24 of his famous book of Proverbs. And as you read these sayings, you have to remember that most historians consider Solomon to be the wisest, wealthiest, and greatest ruler of all the kings and other leaders reported in the 66 books of the entire Bible. In these Proverbs, King Solomon generously shares his best secrets for success, happiness, and prosperity with us. In particular, the bulk of these Proverbs is filled with Solomon's recommendations for leaders to dil diligently seek out, openly appreciate the value of, and passionately embrace wisdom, knowledge, understanding, a reverential piety, and respect for God's authority, and the Lord's correction and and disciplining of leaders as well as encouraging us to embrace a loving heart of peace, wholeness, and humility. These two partial lists depict the work and the craft of leadership duties, authority, roles, and styles, yet our focus on these actions form the very reasons why many leadership education programs fail their students. There are plenty of courses that teach you how to budget your cash and time, train and coach your employees, or organize and lead team meetings, and more. There are articles, papers, videos, books that can help you play the role of a COI, a center of influence, adopt more service-driven styles or authority-based leadership styles. However, you and I have more ambitious landscapes and challenging topographies to traverse in the adventure that we'll embark upon today. Because if we hope to improve the adventure that, if we hope to improve the effectiveness of your leadership performances, we'll need to examine 
and discover the most profitable and promising purposes, power, positioning, and processes for all of your leadership activities. We'll have to imagine and explore the beneficial effects that leaders should endeavor to satisfy. And finally, we'll need to explain how you can improve, increase, and substantially impact the wealth generating potential of your own leadership performances and enrich the value of contributions which you, your partners and employees make to others. How should you position yourself to honestly evaluate the aims you are called to pursue and address the crisis of purposeful leadership and provide your leaders, your followers, with the beneficial results that come from solving these five key challenges? Yet, if you truly hope to understand the implications of and eventually tame the radically differentiated forces of change operating all around our world, you'll need to think strategically and critically about how the many models for technologies, the effects of social ecology, and the complexities in synergistic processes affect your leadership performances. I call these forces radical because they represent the extremely fundamental, substantial, characteristic tendencies which cause change, volatility, uncertainty, ambiguity, and the appearance of chaotic confusion in our world. Most leaders know something about the nature, traits, and attributes of those forces. However, leaders must understand what gives these conditions their challenging attributes. In short, you should apply your knowledge and begin the process of unleashing your own resources. Then you can use your actions, expertise, and abilities to tame those radical forces. In a moment, we'll explain how many concepts shown on this map might help you tame these radical rascals. Leaders who wish to optimize their organizational results will first need to learn how to creatively shape, elegantly develop, and productively deploy the awesomely wealth-producing capabilities of their human capital assets, impacts, and resources. Later on, we'll take a few minutes to fully examine the core ideas behind these domains of human capital. And most importantly, we'll discuss a few strategies you can use to unlock unleash and understand the wealth generating potential of your own treasure trove of human capital. Of course you'll want to become that great leader who recognizes the importance of developing strengths, de strengths driven philosophies, priority based policies, and procedural frameworks for guiding, nurturing, and engineering soundly scientific, solidly structural, or sustainably spiritual performances. Once you understand the secret potential of your leadership power applications, your leadership performances will surely become more agile, effective, and efficient. And to help you guide great performance results in the contributions that you and, and your employees make, we'll also describe approaches you can take that will help you improve your prospects for growth, sustainability, and prosperity. Resourceful leaders use their imaginations to efficiently leverage time. They significantly communicate their foundational meanings and they design systematic activities to signal critical indicators for creative ventures. 
Leadership excellence is easily, strategically, and competently achieved whenever you energetically employ all four of these powerful ideas. Discovering and exploiting profit-building opportunities demands game-changing mindsets, boldly aggressive allocation strategies, and concentrated applications of your leadership power. With these elements in place, you are ready to broaden the scale, scope, and spectrum of your leadership skills and begin solving the many challenges of our wild, weird, and woolly world. Let's launch a universe frontiering expedition into that vastness of space-time where the dimensions of human potential are multiplied and limitless. It's a place where even the outer limits of or the twilight zone seem small and insignificant. Like wise King Solomon told us, we will need to utilize the full resources of our minds, hearts, eyes, and ears as those body parts help to lift our soul and spirit and senses to their highest heights of attainment, achievement, and accomplishment. And because this region of space-time is a place where the following realities, patterns, archetypes, and assumptions hold true, that is, the industries we compete in have changed, the pace of our world has changed, the tools we use have changed, the ways we perform our work have changed, the types of employees we need the most have changed, and we must take that leap of faith, get out there into our universe, and begin our adventure. Throughout human history, there has been a prevailing paradigm or model for technology of the time, which states what is acceptable, valuable, fungible, or viable to people for their profitable use. These models help humanity decipher, deal with, and control the elemental or environmental forces of their times. We'll also look into how social ecology impacts the relations, interactions, separations, and interdependencies between people, our societies, and our organizations. Then we'll finally investigate the crucial wilderness taming roles played by the phenomena of systems, structures, synergies, syntropy, and signification. Before defining this crucial concept called a model for technology, I'll share one illustration of why these models are important to us all. Back around 100 or more years before Jesus Christ walked upon the earth, a Greek man invented a steam-powered device which was used to open the doors of pagan temples and perform various entertaining stunts. However, even before that device was invented, the Greeks and others had already created and used rails made out of wood, iron, bronze, brass, and other metals for carrying objects, pulling and pushing carriages, and for reducing the burdens on their animals and human slaves. With just a little more effort, these metal rails and a steam-powered or steam-propelled device could easily have become a load of locomotive engine carrying carriages over roads of metal rails nearly 2,000 years before rail systems were finally invented, built, and used in the mid-1800s. My theory and the theories of others is that those ancient Greeks, Egyptians, and Romans believed that the prevailing paradigm for a successful venture was not dependent on mechanically inclined technological prowess or abilities. The people with the moral, financial, and governmental power 
only saw steam-driven and rail-based technologies as separate, unconnected ways to strengthen conviction, facilitate conveyance, or provide celebratory entertainment. However, every model for technology can easily push the frontiers of new discoveries because each model makes it easy to determine the most practical, profitable, and appropriate usage for applications or specific combinations of the existing technologies. Now, at this moment in time, we are all operating in agreement with two different prevailing paradigms. One paradigm is more than 2,000 years old. It was first espoused by Jesus Christ, and it set the stage for every subsequent leader because Jesus proved that no other form of leadership would be acceptable or as useful to the world except leaders who generously serve the needs of their followers and other humans rather than leaders who choose to serve their own greedy self-interests. The old paradigm of our industrial age was based upon purely physical attributes and capabilities. However, our current paradigm applies to the physical biological, the social, and the metaphysical realms. In his book, The Coming Prosperity, Professor Philip Arswald asks us these questions. Are your actions producing transformational outcomes, or are you moving human progress forward to realize authentic forms of sustain or sustainable prosperity? Do your leadership models rely on stale routines, or are you elegantly seeking the novelty in your possibilities? Are you efficiently inventing new ways of dealing with a constantly changing world? And are you effectively using your limited resources to depend upon the creativity of people and any proven models of entrepreneurship? First, let us remember that our current model for technology is based upon our understanding of the biological processes occurring within any form of an ecological niche. With that definition fixed in our mind, we can see how author Kevin Kelly and other people define technology, or what Kelly calls the technium, really includes much, much more than hardware or computer software or buildings and similar physically tangible objects. Technological things also include biology, sociology, philosophy, economics, legal and political systems. Science now sees the essence of most technologies as consisting of the intangible organization of energy and information at their core. In fact, when it comes to the social sciences, the arts and human behavior or psychology, we must conclude that the energies at work are simply flows, fields, or forces of information. There's a book that I tell leaders and professionals to buy and read and reread and then read again. It's Peter Drucker's Innovation and Entrepreneurship. In this vitally important book, Drucker applies the lessons of scientific historian Thomas Kuhn's Structure of Scientific Revolutions and proves that our current model for technology is based upon our understanding of the biological processes occurring in ecological niches. Drucker, Kelly, and others explain how those biological processes are not organized around electrical, magnetic, atomic, or other physical forms of energy, but those biological processes are information-based energies. 
What you need to learn and understand is this. Leadership, management, economics, and even marketing use scientific principles, and thus they are socially based technologies. And every technology has its own paradigms, principles, procedures, practices, disciplines, and systems it uses to achieve its desired results. The ecological spaces that you and I operate in are threefold, that is, one of which are socially based activities, such as the actions that involve one-on-one -on -one and group-based communication exchanges, such as our meetings, conversations, presentations. The second type of space are socially based ecological niches which can take the form of a profession such as the legal, medical, accountancy professions, or the niche can be an industrial sec sector such as manufacturing, government, community services, shipping, or retail services. And finally, the third spaces are socially based ecosystems which are closed, usually self-organizing entities such as what we call organizations, brokerages and agencies, corporations, major account teams, project teams, and so on. Okay, there we are. If we look at leadership as a technological endeavor, and we hope our leadership produces transformational outcomes, and we want our models for technology to help us generate elegant, efficient, and highly effective performances, then these four domains should provide us with tons of guidance, direction, and aspirational inspiration. I'm sure you know all types of leaders who appear to be elegantly more artistic or more scientific than other leaders in their neat, simple, more precise approach to and practice of leadership. And there are certain leaders who act as if they are accountable for their duties solely and directly to all Almighty God himself. These leaders have a passionate dream for an ideal or an unshakable belief in a higher purpose, or they obey, obey a higher calling than the rest of us. They lead as though the welfare and wellness of all humanity is their most important mission, and then there are those very competent and powerfully efficient transformational, entrepreneurial, and intellectual leaders. Believe me, if you take the time and make the effort to study these very successful types of leaders, just like I have done in devoting more than 25,000 hours to researching, studying, and teaching leaders around the world, you too will discover that they all make serious use of various forms of information enriched, clearly directed, and very disciplined applications of their leadership power to achieve truly great successes. All structures, systems, and sciences are governed by their respective algorith algorithmic information energies. For instance, physical sciences are material systems governed by psycho chemical algorithms, while biological entities are living systems governed by biogenetic algorithms. Psychology is reflected as mental systems composed of neural impulses and behavioral selections governed by neural behavioral algorithms, and social sciences are culturally symbolic justification based belief systems governed by social sociolinguistic algorithmic information. What's all this talk about algorithms? Well, in a word, algorithms are simply sets of unambiguous instructions which, when performed in a prescribed manner, are designed to achieve a goal or some desired results. Here's one quick example. If you find ways to channel 
amplify, magnify, or enhance the social energies of your organizational values of honesty, integrity, decency, and courage through your team meeting agendas, employee newsletter articles, individual coaching and mentoring conversations, and your business mission statements, you're certain to influence, inspire, and and instill a strong behavioral accountability, cultural norms, and shared beliefs throughout your stakeholder communities. Your creativity can be rejuvenated, restored, renewed, or refreshed through the disciplined application of your leadership power by using this score, scorecard based tracking focused system tool and by applying the techniques of scoring, evaluating, appraising, examining, dissecting, comparing, and by mapping the energy flows, the biological processes, and signatures of ecological impacts which affect the conditions and entities within your ecosystem, which could be your organization, product team, um, department, or regional uh, headquarters, etc., you will find that those mapping, appraising, and scoring activities will lead to removals of impure to removals of impurities and injections of pure nutritional sustenance. In a word, you can improve the integrity, performance, and strength of your organization using these met methods and devices which can help your employees avoid the drastic and messy reductions in the workforce and painful office and plant closures or those fragile austerity measures that plague so many organizations around the world. In short, this worksheet and its queries helps you examine, evaluate, and enhance the people, policies, and processes operating throughout the environs of your team, organization, or community. In its simplest form, this model or map of an organization and all organized enterprises are social ecosystems. This model of an ecosystem shows that there are three basic sources of social energy. One is imported or syntropic, one is shared or synergistic, and one can be exported or significant in its nature, its operation, and its manifestation. This map suggests the concepts of a knowledge-based ecology, and according to entrepreneur and consultants George Poor and Janice Malloy, a knowledge ecology's goal is to develop and mobilize collective intelligence and ultimately organizational wisdom. By acknowledging the social nature of learning and the key role that technology can play in bringing people together, knowledge economy, ecology bridges the gap between the static data repositories of knowledge management and the dynamic adaptive behavior of natural systems. Writing in the the 2000 edition of the Systems Thinking Newsletter, experts Poor and Malloy explain that knowledge ecology is a field that focuses on discovering better social, organizational, behavioral, and technical conditions for knowledge creation and utilization. Knowledge ecology draws on the fields of knowledge management, communities of practice, businesses as complex adaptive systems, organizational learning, and hypertext organizations, its primary area of study, that is knowledge ecology, and domain of action are, design, are the design and support of self-organizing knowledge ecosystems in which information, insights, ideas and inspiration cross-fertilize and feed one another. 
Free from the constraints of geography and schedule, a knowledge ecosystem consists of a network of conversations, face-to-face -face or virtual, contributing to and informed by rich knowledge repositories. Knowledge ecosystems, just like biological ones, are evolving, self-sustaining, self-regulating, and self-organizing. Or as Bucky Fuller says, Every viable structure is a self-stabilizing energy event complex or system that contains a minimum set of four energy events. When it comes to reversing the disturbing effects of chaos, you need to increase the flow of syntropy into your systems, structures, and societies. While losses of cohesion or reductions in camaraderie demand strong doses of synergistic developments or interventions, yet the unruly challenges of uncertainty or volatility must, can, and should be overcome through communications of signification. Let's agree that social energies are any form of imported, exported, converted, or absorbed bits of information which, when transmitted, exchanged, or received by or through human beings, will give, sustain, energize or regenerate the life of a socially based activity such as a one-to-one -one or one-to-many meeting or conversation or the energies which impact an ecological niche such as a profession industrial sector or class of standards or the social energies which occur within and affect the affairs of a social ecosystem such as your team, organization, community association, family household, or faith-based group. So finally, in a nutshell, leaders must employ three S phenomena oriented principles, processes, and practices to structure, systematize, and support the enrichment, expansion, and extension of their social energies. There are three primary life enriching purposes for using your leadership power and to transform your power from being commanding and controlling, being disrespectful or denigrating and being manipulative or deceptive, you'll need to fully enhance the life edifying properties of your social energies. Therefore, your leadership activities of thinking, communicating, and performing can and will help you and your stakeholders succeed by giving you the abilities, the strengths, or the insights you need to achieve some desirable result. In fact, we declare that for leaders, those desired results should help leaders fulfill one or more of those life enriching purposes. You should be making inroads towards a better and deeper understanding of a situation, opportunity, or a challenge. Or two, producing improvements through unleashing the powers, purposes, and potentials of humans. Or three, shaping innovations by undertaking the risks, rewards, and rigors of all your possibilities. Because we operate in an environment where these three fields, forces, and factors must be rapidly, accurately processed, validated, categorized, and incorporated into our daily decisions, our deployments and duties, and our delegations of authority in our thoughts, deeds, and feelings. Generally, we become leaders who begin our leadership adventure by seeing, then feeling, then believing we have an ability to lead, and as we engage our minds, hands, and hearts in the doing of leadership, we start to think, behave, and speak with an aura of confidence, even with an appearance of wisdom, as we perform the activity of leadership. Until 
with enough practice and with sufficient quantities of experiences which are developed through a continuous process of reflection, adequate feedback, and knowledgeable support, we find ourselves leading in a masterful, more logical fashion in concert with elegantly practiced levels of competence. At this stage, we realize a sensation of the artistry of leading others, and we use our realizations as justification to improve our abilities even further. And so, our dream goes on. The only way leaders can tame or successfully respond to the radical changing complex of uncertainty and volatility is to optimize their organizational resources, realities, and results. In a word, leaders will need to explain the purposes and meanings of their enterprise, learn how to creatively shape elegantly develop and productively deploy the wealth, the awesome wealth producing capabilities of your human capital assets, impacts, and resources. In my more than 40 years of practicing leadership, I have found that these four tenets to tend to hold true in most circumstances and many situations. So let's change these statements as follows. 1. That leadership which is practicing transformational, situational, or spiritual leadership without a rigorous philosophy has no basis for a realistic vision. 2. That leadership that is guiding enterprises or entities without an empathic strategic intention has no sense of defining direction. 3. That leadership that is operating on people, processes, or products without purposeful activity has no meaningful impact. And 4. That leadership that is continuing without injections or installments of energy has no sustainable involvement. Why should your challenges enrich your leadership performances? Because when you're using your leadership power to support the purposes of your leadership actions, and those actions are being directed to help your people, policies, or processes achieve, strengthen, and shape a better world, life, and or situations, the only questions you need to ask are, how would you interpret the meanings of your leadership power, and would the effective exercise of your expertise, attitude, and skills results in the outcomes you desire or intend? There are four discrete dom domains, a sphere or set of elements limiting our knowledge, influence, or activities involved in any discussions of human capital. They are composed of attributes, how we qualify, portray, or associate the objectives of our actions. Our actions are always action, an action on, which is physical, an action with, which is intellectual or mental, an action for, which is spiritual, emotional, or psychological, and an action towards, which is developmental. Our assets our forms, elements, and locations of the tangible or intangible properties, advantages, and value that every person can and does contribute. Our resources are the tools, supply, and support sources of human beings needing maintenance, development, sustenance, replenishment, and supervision. And our impacts are how, how much, or where human beings affect themselves, their environments, their world, and their universe. Examples can include our fields of focus, which are our reasons or motivations for acting, and our capacity, which are those actions towards endowing us with capability, competency, or potential. 
when you engage your human capital, it's your task to help your partners, associates, colleagues, constituents, or clients connect with, believe in, commit to, organize for, performing mission-critical activities, reaching for the desired objectives, or completing specific tasks. Empower them by linking them with the knowledge, resources, assets, and processes they need, preparing them for the tasks, activities, objectives, challenges, and problems they will work through, directing them to the sources of tools or materials, supplies and resources, specialists or networks that enable their efforts, guiding them in identifying, classifying, mapping or modeling, learning, analyzing, evaluating, innovating, and creating, or managing, venturing, and leading for any situation. By empowerment, I mean facilitating the supply of energy, mass, and capability to perform the work at hand, to, to provide people with the energy of a belief, understanding, competency, and meaning. And then we encourage them. We give them a purpose for being, for their inclusion, for making a difference in contribution, for reaching upwards or towards a higher plateau, an obligation to, to the mission to help others, to fulfill an ideal, to belong to a higher power or greater good, trust in the common purpose, in the goodness of others, love and mercy of God, in a promising potential for the venture, an affinity with a noble or worthy enterprise, with other positive or success-oriented people, and we encourage them with a great and righteous goal. There are only two types of experiences any human being can have. Either your experience will be a result of an experiment, a plan, an intention, or some other form or pursuit that you were engaged in or committed to, or your experience will be something that just happened to you, like an airplane falls out of the sky and onto your house, a criminal steals your credit card from the cash register, or a competitor invents and offers the marketplace something that is totally new and radically different from anything ever seen before. Regardless of this type of experience, you must apply your sympathetic knowledge skills to increasing or deepening your understanding of that experience. As Peter Drucker says, Checking the results of a decision against its expectations shows executives what their strengths are, where they need to improve, and where they lack knowledge or information." Unquote. All reality appears in two forms or takes place in two realms. That means you will see, hear, smell, touch, or otherwise sense the physical aspects and traits of your reality. And there will be an intangible or unseen form of that reality that your physical senses can never experience. However, those metaphysical phenomena such as the ideas, ideals, insights, affect the physical world. So your leadership performances must keep both forms of reality in your heart and mind at all times. In a word, things, places, and performances are physical, while emotions, wills, and thoughts are metaphysical. Both are important aspects of your, re of your reality that you must understand to operate effectively. Peter Drucker advises leaders that a manager is responsible for the application and performance of knowledge. Your leadership power applications must be positioned in accordance 
accordance or in compliance with the principle of universal integrity. That is, every time a leader has to read, react to, or rely on any information, that leader must use those strengthening, reinforcing, elastic, or implosive forces to surround, incorporate, or envelop the escaping, explosive, or exhausting forces of chaos, confusion, and condemnation which threatens our ability to deeply understand and appreciate the validity of the situation, conversation, or circumstance. Only your sympathetic, which is more accurately stated as your strategic method for applying or absorbing knowledge, which, by the way, is how you sustain and supply your deep reservoir of understanding. It is only your deep understanding which will provide you with the widest possible arc of broad acceptance, a global perspective, and intensive concentration of the manner, matter at hand. Successful leaders realize the value of communicating their vision, the meaning of work to customers and for employees, building trust and being trustworthy, and delegating their own power and authority to all employees. These are the types of leaders who apply, develop, and sharpen their system's intelligence and see the value generated by those types of leadership actions which pay off and produce massively profitable transformations in the intellect and spirit of their organizational ecosystem. Using processes which enable you and your colleagues to explore, examine, evaluate, engage, energize, empower, and encourage greater, more excellent performances from your people, systems, and products will expand the dimensionality of your leadership accomplishments. What must leaders use to orchestrate new growth and better service? We have to see and envision the possibilities, opportunities, and problems that are within our imaginations and our fields of perception. For example, is that river clean and useful for carrying goods or people? Could we build or float a platform or dock to place and load those goods and people onto boats or barges, etc.? But before we can ask and answer any of those or other questions, we we first, I'm sorry, our first source and provider of refuge and power will need to come from information. Of course, every game-changing strategy is in fact its own unique ontological journey where identities are formed and created, commitments to values, beliefs, and principles are made, and possibilities are imagined, envisioned, and distinguished. On this journey, leaders are positioned in front and in the presence of their people as they search for the knowledge of being and the reality of being. To sustain the energies of your newly developed strengths and newly developed strengths, consultants for McKinsey and company recommend that leaders, quote, Try to bottle the lessons of the transformation as it moves along and to ingrain within the organization a repeatable process to deliver better and better results long after it formally ends. End quote. I believe that when your leadership strategies are disciplined applications of your abilities, when they empower you to give and take direction both during your experiments and what happens to you, and when you continuously evaluate and diagnose every shortfall in your performances, you will begin to experience more promising and positive changes in the game being played. 
What are you doing about your organization's ability to develop its capacities for change, create better, more optimized systems, improve operational excellence, strengthen processes that permit superior performances, overcome barriers to higher employee accomplishments, deliver outstanding value-added services and products to all your internal and external clients and partners. While you work on constructing and pursuing your perfectly formed and envisioned version of realities, these five occupations will help you transform your leadership activities, social energies, and environmental connections into abundantly creative, wealth-producing profit makers and significantly meaningful results. And these five tasks will help you improve and increase your leadership effectiveness, analyze or identify serious shortfalls and gaps in your leadership performances, and help you activate more powerful social skills and strengthen your social intelligence. Quite simply, these are information-driven, socially-based, behaviorally-centered applications which leaders use, employ, and act through to enable them to specify, pursue, or fulfill their strategic and tactical purposes. So far, we have described a few strategies for improving, guiding, energizing, and elevating your leadership performances. However, it is time for us to boost the resourcefulness of our understanding about strategy, strategic intention, and strategic thinking. So here we go. There is an act of the human will, which usually gets confused with an act inspired by human emotion called love. When leading people, you would do well to employ the willful act of love and leave your emotionally charged love at home. We saw that all humans have a soul, which consists of three separate and distinct parts. Number one, we have a human mind, we have a human will, which is a free or unimpeded power to make whatever choices we wish or choose to make. No one else can influence or control our will unless we allow that person or thing to influence our will. And every human being has emotions. So even though there are certain duties, tasks, or activities we may not feel like performing, we still do those things because we have to, are supposed to do, are, are obligated to do. In those cases, we have performed the act because we applied our willpower and decided to do those acts. How many of these transformational intentions have you included in your game-changing strategy? If you take the time and make the sincere effort to energetically develop or clearly distinguish or fully deploy or completely dedicate the wealth-producing potentials of your human capital assets, resources, impacts, and attributes, you will see tremendous growth, nurturing, and enrichment in your organizational successes. Every leadership philosophy describes how an individual leader aspires to and deals with the challenges of attaining their personal or professional versions of God, glory, and gold. So ideally, if you hope to envision or achieve your most desirable realities, then these four concepts can and should be thoroughly explored, completely expounded upon, and deeply expressed by your own uniquely crafted leadership philosophy. Leadership means putting yourself in the position of learning, committing, purposing, and trusting yourself to the efforts required for transforming your human capital into creative producers of wealth and growth. Jack Welsh of GE, GE used his position of ignorance to ask questions of and learn about the plans, ideals, 
ideas and intentions of his management teams and employees, and then use their inputs to guide, direct, and lead them, lead the company to great successes. Leaders can use their actions to prove they are committed to their people, their vision, and their growth, unlike Steve Jobs of Apple, who was totally pur purposeful in his daily work. Leaders who have no purpose will soon discover that their people have no passion or inspiration. And finally, every leader has to operate from a position of trusting others to do the right thing, and those leaders who trust the morality, loyalty, and integrity of others will find that others will begin to trust that leader in return. If you hope your employees and stakeholder communities use your visionary aspirations to energize the creations, contributions, collaborations, and connections they will need to compete and win in today's environment of chaos, confusion, complexities, catastrophes, and changing priorities, you will need to pack your vision statements with elements of information-based, knowledge-rich, wisdom propelling energies there are seven essential elements of power that your vision statement should include which are purposeful elements of power i'm sorry which are purposeful action compelling reasons trustworthy purposes value valuable identity principal activities eternal hope and unlimited dimensionality In your every leadership thought, action, and belief, you must be entrepreneurial in your approach, as if you are involved in a startup that faces uncertainty with a passionate desire to serve and a willingness to test or experiment at all times, that you are always transformational in your intentions and dedication to develop everything and everyone, make clear distinctions and meaningful changes in your services and products, you are philosophically authentic and disciplined in nature, and you are a complete and competent professional in your methods, your discipline, and your pursuit of new knowledge. A salient, a salient feature of such a thought system is that all inherent characteristic quantities, quantities, par parameters, constants, indicators, etc., as defined by Dr. Ludovico's theory of evolving systems, so that these prior these parameters, constants, indicators, etc., can be expressed in function of the recognized and quantified interactions only. This means also that once the system's specific interactions are quantified by appropriate methods and instruments, all of the significant analytical conclusions are also quantified and expressed independently of any other quantity that is extraneous to the system of the interactions described and represented. The energy events of your leadership agency system enable you to nurture and strengthen your philosophical, moral, social and structural positions because you can build the energy of empathy for your people or stakeholders, display commitment to your ideals, insights or individuals, impact or influence, meaning for your process meaning for your processes, policies or products, and when your structural agency of signification inspires trust in your integrity, involvements, or intentions, your leadership power will increase, be measurable, and become clearly recognizable to everyone. There are power rationalizations employing leadership power to affect the change on an ideal which is physical, which is an action on, intellectual, which, which is an action with, emotional, 
and spiritual, which is an action for, or developmental, which is an action towards. Leaders have to take direct action because every challenge, problem, trouble, difficulty, or opportunity you encounter as a leader provides you with a compelling rationale for and requires that you take action on something, that you act with some idea, you act for some worthwhile or worthy ideal, and that you act towards some form of progress or advancement. Multidimensional leaders realize that their own perspectives will determine their realities. If you hope to discover profitable, game-changing opportunities, you'll have to expand, expand your outlook on the, out, on the universe. Your own models, paradigms, concentrations, structures, and systems for leadership will need greater energizing influences. Here's a very noteworthy, idealistic, and ambition mission statement that you could use when creating your own business model for becoming a highly effective leader. When creating your model, you must eventually ask yourself why five different times to understand your fundamental, most inspirational purpose for leading. Your other four answers to why this model could become these statements like these is the is this is the business of leadership enriching human capital is the business of leadership transforming human capital into wealth producing assets is the business of leadership transforming your human capital investments into highly creative wealth generating powerhouses or is the business of leadership engaging enhancing enriching and enlivening all the energies of your human capital assets, impacts, resources, and attributes every day? Once the World Wide Web gave millions of people access to a billion pieces of information. We could have kissed the information age goodbye. And back in the days when knowledge was the key competitive advantage, we had to find ways to manipulate, analyze, evaluate, translate, synthesize, and transform those billions of data into practical, relevant, valuable, useful applications. And to be sure, we still find ourselves in that place where knowledge acquisition, production, evaluation, management, and enhancement are core elements of our strategies, but we now find the highways through which knowledge alone fuels our advancements and advantages, taking us to places of little comfort or refuge. Now those tiny villages are filling up with people who didn't used to live there. Those competitors are moving in with greater numbers, and they have similar tools, skills, and know-how. They also have greater aspirations, too. This no information age is not about the best and the brightest. It's about tapping into the historically awesome stories of creative, insightful, resourceful potential of human beings. If you want your leadership power to unleash the awesome human potentials needed for this imagination age, you must concentrate your thoughts, deeds, and emotions on the sea-powered actions. Next, we'll look at a structure to help you challenge yourself and your people to aspire and achieve your highest ideals, and then we'll examine a powerful communication system that will supply your enterprise with unlimited possibilities and energies. In Okay. Um, in Durkheim's Axiom of Social Authority and Bucky Fuller's Structural System Definitions, we discovered how the realities of social authority are derived through any social interactions which involve the mutually beneficial enactments of the of the constructs or ideals that a particular society, social act, or social system embraces, along with the externally or internally influenced actors and leaders 
and the moral or ethical constraints adopted by the systems and those actors. So leaders must employ speech acts, use language cues, encourage interactions between various cultural or ethnic groups, promote and engage people through stretch assignments and more challenging projects, while those leaders empower everyone to assume greater leadership roles envisioning, planning, and managing, coordinating, or communicating tasks. That is, Durkheim's axiom of social authority says, to the degree that any social interactions involve the mutual enactment of social norms and social roles, those interactions will embody social facts, and those social facts will clearly reveals, reveal the realities of social authority. Conversing, discussing, and reading done wrong without sympathy only teaches us less than it can. It can lead, uh, leave us worse off than before by confirming that we have nothing to learn from other people. Without sympathy, there is no understanding and nothing worth understanding. As Nobel laureate economist George Akerlof describes in his Nobel Prize winning paper, those who withhold or block out information during their interactions will enjoy a far less quality of knowledge and understanding than those who transmit and open themselves to fully receive new information. Only the people who faithfully obey Akerlof's law of transactional quality in their conversations, discussions, and reading will discover those golden nuggets of wealth-producing ideas, strategic ideals, new interpretations, or game-changing instructions, where signaling shows proves or demonstrates their understanding, and screening says, suggests, or indicates they understand. Thank you. This ends today's lesson. Um, what I'd love to encourage you to do is to uh, look on the right-hand side of your screen and um, if you feel that you want to begin to maximize the results from each and every one of your leadership actions, uh, you can click uh, and get started in our program, uh, Results Maximizer Framework um, Series. Or um, you've been seeing uh, little sticky notes um, appear on the right side of your screen as well. and. Um, and those will take you to some of our other programs uh, or uh, introduce you uh, to us through our 30-minute free consultations. Um, and in fact, if you want to take advantage of that free consult consultation call, uh, that's a, that is not only free, it's also no obligation, and there's not going to be any selling. I'm going to, not going to try to sell you anything. It's actually uh, designed to energize your leadership performances, uh, and that is sort of like a one-on-one a -one, um, exploration and examination, and even some um, true explanations, if you will, of um, ways that you can do that for yourself in your own unique challenges and situations. Um, all you need to do is just uh, type in, uh, get your web browser, type in one imcom forward slash ready, the word ready, and that's with a capital R. Um, R-E-A-D-Y, uh, and just click on that and that'll take you to my little calendar appointment setting program. And all you have to do is pick out a time and date that's convenient for you and that'll automatically go into my calendar. And um, we, uh, and of course you'll provide your phone number and or your Skype ID and uh, that way I can contact you. And um, Let's see. And also, um, don't forget that I wrote the book on leadership power. 
and um, you can take advantage of that. It's on Amazon.com. All you need to do is either go to Amazon.com and look in the books section um, for the following title, The Leadership Power Handbook, dot, dot, dot. Um, all you need to do is put in The Leadership Power Handbook, and it'll come up first. Uh, I don't think anybody else has got that title as of now. And um, you can you can learn about what's in that book. And, um, you know, you can use that handbook. It's designed to be a handbook. So that means you can operate with it from day to day, uh, every single day. And you don't, there's no theories involved. These are all practical um, applications of your leadership power that's in that book. Um, and, of course, um, you've got some of our tools as well um but but um the leadership power handbook can be also gotten through uh www.one-im.com forward slash power book uh with a capital p and a capital b that's www.one-im.com forward slash power book uh and that'll get you to the book and stuff that's reasonably priced as well i think it's a you know very reasonably priced uh, people have really done very well following a lot of the uh strategies and and methods and and uh, little processes that are in that book that are laid out in that book so um so Best wishes to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us in today's webinar. And um, I'll uh, run back over to my trusty little, uh, what do you call those things, uh, control panel. And uh, just say thanks for joining us today. I wish you all the very best of success in all of your leadership endeavors. Um, God bless each and every one of you. God speed to you all. This is Bill Thomas thanking you and wishing you the best of success in all of your leadership endeavors. Take care.